everyone. We just want to welcome you all to church this morning. So nice to see all of you. And we just want to remind you of the COVID regulations that we have to keep our mask on at all times unless you speak into the mic. And also um, that you also have to keep a safe distance from one another, a one and a half. So we must respect that. And then I just also want to um, just make an announcement about the gents, the gentlemen, the toilets. It is not working. It's out of order. So please, gents, if you can use the toilets around the corner. Okay, thank you. Enjoy the service. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I can just ask the ushers just to close the doors. We're going to stand together. We're going to worship the Lord together. Thank you, Jesus. Side doors can stay open, just the back doors. Thank you. God bless you. Keep the side doors open for ventilation. And there's lots of space this morning, so we want to invite you to come and join us here in the front. And let's worship the Lord together. Amen. Oh, and we see. 
beautiful are the tents of Israel. How beautiful, how beautiful are my people to me, says the Lord. How beautiful and radiant, washed by my blood. Full of sap, full of my blessings, full of my riches. How beautiful is the tents of Israel. How beautiful, full of blessings, are my people. How rich and full of treasures are my people. Full of life. Of radiant light, they shine forth my glory. How beautiful, how beautiful you are to me, my bride. How glorious, how splendid are you. To me, full of praise, full of my goodness, full of my mercy, full of my kindness, full of my love, full of my compassion, full of my gifts, full of my healing. You are beautiful, my people, you are beautiful to me. rich because of me you are rich you are rich nobody's got a word my communion message will add to this about the bride. Spirit is so faithful because the Lord said to me, I must speak today about the bride. And um, it started when Prophet Chantal was singing about, you know, that he will return to fetch us with his host and his army. And um, so that second return. But before that, I just want to share that, you know, in the Old Testament thinking, there's two covenants. And the one covenant is basically our covenant between God and, um, and the Father. 
God the Father and Jesus. And it's a covenant with us, but we enter into that covenant through Jesus Christ. And today I want to share some insights concerning the Jewish or the uh, marriage of the ancient Israeli, how they used to get married. And there's a few things that we can draw from Christ's return. And the first thing is that, you know, the, the young man would go to the father and ask, can I get married to this lady? And then they would drink, a, if they agree, they would drink a cup of wine. And that represents Jesus Christ to us. He's asked the Father for our hand that we can be his bride. And he made that covenant. He was joined to us through the blood, his blood, and he paid that price. And then he would also give her gifts. And Jesus has given the church gifts. We know that he's given us the five ascension gifts. And he will give her family gifts. So that's the same where the, the bridegroom will give the, the bride some gifts that she can, while she's waiting for him and while she's preparing herself for him because he will return. Then he leaves to go and prepare a place for her. So maybe we can, Teacher Chantal sang, uh, Prophet Chantal sang that scripture. So maybe we can just look at that scripture. It's in John 14. I just, I'll just look in my Bible. So Jesus says, let your heart not be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For my Father's house is many mansions. And if, you, if it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And I, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. So there's another promise that he will come to receive us for himself. So, um, and then, you know, he leaves and the bride remains with her father in her father's house. And she has to prepare herself. She's got to get herself ready. And that's what Prophet Nola also sang, that we have got this beautiful garment. We are radiant. We are full of glory. We are full of light because we are his bride. And we are beautiful to him. And he is beautiful to us because he is our groom. And then finally, she's also got a lamp that she's got to put in a window and waiting for him because she doesn't know when he's going to return. That speaks of the oil of the Holy Spirit that's within us, the anointing that's within us. And we're always ready because we don't know when our bridegroom will return. And then when he comes, he will snatch her away to go to the wedding feast. And that's exactly what Jesus will do. It speaks of the rapture. He will snatch us away to receive him in the clouds and his second coming. And then finally, they drink the second cup of wine where they consummate their marriage. And so the first betrothal is just as important as the last celebration. And then that is the celebration of the Lamb. And I want to read that in Revelation for us. Mm -hmm. Revelation 19 verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. See, we are making ourselves ready for that beautiful day. So today with communion, I want us to remember Jesus' death and resurrection. Because of what he has done for us. But we already joined together in him in that covenant relationship. And in that covenant relationship, he said there is provision. There is, he has straight down our enemies. He is our defense. He will fight on our behalf. And the church is beautiful to him. And he is beautiful to us. And then... So let us remember, and also let us remember that we are preparing ourselves. And that we will share this good news with others. And that he will return for his bride. Amen. So we can have some communion. I'll, I'll just pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your bride and that we are beautiful to you. And Lord, thank you that you are our beloved and that you are beautiful to us. Lord Jesus, I pray that, thank you, Lord, that the gates of hell will not prevail against your church. But Lord, your church will arise and shine her light in this earth so that many will be drawn to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
please have share your communion. God bless you. Morning, everyone. Anyone with some testimonies uh, from the area, you can line up on that side and uh, share your testimonies with us today. Thank you. Good morning, church. My name is Eric. I'd just like to testify about God's goodness um, to us as a family. Uh, bear with me as I share this, and I trust that you, it'll encourage you in your faith walk. Um, it was EJ's birthday on Thursday, and, and, and things were a bit tight, and... Uh, and what happened was uh, we couldn't plan his birthday properly. But you know what? We said, my boy, let's put our trust in the Lord. Let's trust him that he's going to come through for you and do something for you. Because uh, you do so much for him. You, you uh, willingly offer what you have financially to, to, you know, as well. And I reminded the Lord of that uh, two nights before. And where it was quiet, the morning of his birthday, come two o'clock, the whole day had changed. And God had come through and he could have a wonderful birthday party. God had provided. He could have a wonderful time with friends. So I thank the Lord for that, you know. Um, God said something to me. He said, I said, Lord, what do you want from me? And you know what he said? Total dependency. Total dependency. God will come through for you. He has not forgotten you. He knows you by your name. Good morning, church. 
Uh, I can just testify of God's goodness and greatness and provision. Um, we were in the situation where the property we lived in and rented, we were informed that the property has been sold, and we haven't found another place yet. But, like Romans 8.28 says, that all things work to good for those who love God and are called according to His purposes and His plan. Now, we put our trust in God because we couldn't do anything from our way. The Holy Spirit showed us a way to do things, and the way opened up in the desert where there was no way. And God has provided that we now have our own house amidst a situation where, according to the world, it should not be possible, but we do not live. We are not of this world, but we are in this world. We are of Christ, and Christ, like we heard now, He's our groom that provides us with gifts, and God has gifted us with a place to stay that we can call our own. And I want to praise God for that and thank Him for that. Morning, um, morning, church. Um, I just wanted to thank the Lord for this accurate church. And I wanted to add something that to what Prophet Lynette said about, about the Jewish bride. Um, before her wedding, she has to go and have a, what we would call baptism. If they call it a ritual bath, there is a Hebrew word for it, which is called the mikvah. And that speaks to me of baptism and of John the Baptist preparing the people to receive the Lord. Um, I've been praying for this church, and I was just so grateful to hear that because I was going to add that anyway. morning church thank you for the gifts of the body my son got married on on tuesday and thank you for apostle rj it was such a joyous occasion it was so beautiful so marvelous in god's eyes and this morning while we were uh, worshiping i just heard the lord says we are marvelous in his eyes we are beautiful we are hepsibach the lord's delight he said, we are his delight, and he has put the watchman on our walls, Isaiah 62. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Neither death, nor principalities, nor powers, or anything can separate us from the love of God. Um. Just want to bring a word of encouragement as we fasted this week. Uh, the Lord spoke to me out of Isaiah 65, and it is full of promise and uh, and goodness. Uh, I, he says, um, "The Lord says." He that blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in God, the God of truth. He says, because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hidden from our eyes. The troubles and the chaos that, that we've experienced, the Lord says, is to be ended. Because the former troubles are forgotten and they are hidden from our eyes. Amen. We fought some, some uh, battles uh, but the Lord has prepared a table for us, and he says, he speaks about, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I create, for the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. Amen? All the trouble we had with the land and building the church and people, God says, <laughs> it's coming to an end. For I created Jerusalem as a rejoicing, like we did this morning, and a people of joy. I will rejoice in you, says the Lord. I will joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. And I've done a lot of crying. I felt like that weeping prophet. 
Um, so God is planning good things for us. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall plant vineyards and eat their own fruit. As the days of the tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain. We have not labored in vain. Amen? Nor bring forth children for trouble. Isn't that a wonderful promise? For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. Isn't that a fantastic promise? Do you know what shalom means? It's got a beautiful meaning. Um, the Lord also in that chapter, Isaiah 65, he says, He will deal with the people who say, Keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am holier than you. This, the Lord says he will deal with the enemy in our midst. Amen. Or, or, or the enemy is already defeated like we sang this morning. Shalom means mem var lametshin. That is not a Hebrews, okay? It means chaos attached authority destroy. Destroy the authority attached to chaos. Shalom, God destroys the authority that is attached to chaos. It made so much sense to me because a few uh, weeks ago I had a vision, a dream, and in this dream, um, Hilton, my son, my younger son was sitting at the foot of a mountain and he sat very relaxed. And I know how he sits when he sits relaxed with his long legs, very much like Andre. And I came and I put my shawl around me, but th there was a distance between us. But around me, it was the most beautiful flowers. I love the spring flowers, that light green, yellow. I don't know. It's like spring green. It's yellow and green at the same time. And that was all around me. And I said to Hilton, come closer. But he ignored me and he just kept speaking what he had to say. And he said this, Mom, soon this chaos will be gone and the ways will be made smooth. Everything will be smoothed out. And so when I read this shalom, it means he just, the Lord destroys. When I say shalom to you, it means God destroys the authority, the ability of Satan that is attached to chaos because Satan wants to destroy things and he wants to make desolate. But God is in control. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Amen. God bless you. I want to encourage you to keep on fasting. If you have time to fast, even if it's just one meal, and uh, give yourself to prayer and let God speak to you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Two, testing one, two. Is it on? Okay. Thank you. Good words. Amen. Good to see all of you. You look beautiful behind your desks. Be good for your postures today and everything, and take nice notes. We'll be writing a test pretty soon, so just keep alert. All those marks will go towards your heavenly credits. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, sister, is Helani available tonight? He's working tonight. Can you come on to workers' meeting? Can someone help you with the children? She looks to the left and says, yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Please help her because the Lord's showing us some things how to ripple out into our communities. Remember the ripple effect? Well, it's rippling out, people. God's giving us. You know what's nice? When you ripple out, it rebounds back to you as well. And every effort you make to go and reach your neighbor in your community, it comes back to you in a way. I was speaking to Sister Cairo this morning uh, from, from Cape to Cairo. She gets around, and God's opened up some doors in local schools for her. And there's things we want to do in the community. They look after some of the interesting people's children in the community in the afternoon there as well. 
they take care of them, and now the Lord's opened doors for them in the community. So every community the Lord showed me, there's different pools that the Lord wants you to ripple out into. Amen? How many bikers, bro? You're no longer a biker. You're going to have to find a different pool. What do you know? Perde. Horsepower. Every person here has got an opportunity to ripple out into where they, where they exist. Amen. And where they live and move and have their being. And it's very exciting for me to hear reports and testimonies of people. And then I see, ah, oh, that's what God wants us to do next. Is follow up those different pools of influence that the Lord has given you. And uh, great reports, you know, coming in from the household leaders. If you want to be part of this church, really, you need to be part of a household group. Because that's where we ripple out into your communities and really have an influence there. And that's where we take care of people. Amen? It's really great to have a care unit close by. It doesn't help you just have one big skier. You need local, the, you know, medical points. And what I've seen the Lord do over the years is take care of people in their local communities. And uh, that's, that's done through very faithful shepherding in our church. And I want to commend our shepherds in the, in the household churches for being faithful. We, we're getting ready to start new households now after this COVID d- pandemic. But you know, you start with your family. Be the priest of your house. And that, that house that, that you're moving into, Pastor Rudy, you know, you can hear he's got a pastor's heart. He speaks about the bride, you know. <laughs> he's a romantic, ne? Yeah. And that's what the Lord's put in your heart. You, you immediately flowed with what the Lord has done in the worship, and it was great. He was testifying about a house, and they've been praying for a long time, you know. That family, you know, they, they're faithful worshipers. Amen. And God bless you with that house. Belleville is most mooi, mooi stad. Ne? Is that where you is? Dylan Belleville, mooi stad, beautiful church, beautiful town, beautiful people, beautiful heart for people. May God bless your house. Speak shalom to it. And what did Prophet Nola say? That it, uh, the shalom destroys the, the authority of chaos in our lives. Isn't that a beautiful word for that? So, you know, at the right time, we'll, we, we'll bless your house with you and we celebrate with you, man. And I know there's some other people also doing that at the moment as well. God's opening doors for you, shifting things in your life, and you're rippling out into some new things. And uh, we'll get to our message in a second. I just want to share something for our offering and tithing. One of the things the Lord invites us to do is to cast all our care upon Him, for He cares for you. 1 Peter 5 verse 7. Maybe just read it together. And it's always good to read around the scriptures. I want to remind you that our Miracle Bible Training Center videos are out there online for you to watch. If you go to MBTC channel, and we can send you the links, or you can ask, and uh, we'll share all those things with you. You can watch all our classes that we're offering at the moment, from Life of Christ to How to Run a Household Church. We're teaching people how to do that too. The Book of Romans, Pentateuch, we're working through a lot of things on our, our Bible College channel. And you can sign up for that for for reasonable fees. You can get a lecture that will help you work through the scriptures. Um, We're all online now. So our lecturers do that and they they connect with people. We've got Teacher Dale, Apostle Andre, Prophet Nola, Apostle Lee, Prophet Lynette, Teacher Chantal, and now Apostle Jan from Citrus Dahl is joining us. Pastor Jan Hendry from Harvester Mariasburg is also on that channel. So you've got fivefold ministers ready to help you. And if you sign up on that, they can take you through the training. We've got a wonderful Teams platform for you to use to study the Bible. And with that, you get free software and you get a terabyte of space. I don't know, for some of you, this doesn't mean anything. But for those parents who do pay for data and who do pay for software, you get this free with Miracle Bible Training Center for for yourself to study. And we share all our documents with you and all our manuals and notes and things like that. It's quite rich. We've got too much to give, really. When, when I give our Bible school to people overseas, they go, oh, this week we had an African council meeting, okay? And for them to get online, Pastor Sam helps me to convene the African leaders in this move of God. They're from Liberia, Uganda, Kenya, Zimbabwe, huh? Malawi. There was someone from Malawi this week. And uh, we were discussing how we can relate and what they need and and some of them were saying, you know, and I'm going to do Pastor Emmanuel Roberts, okay, forgive me, but I'm going to try and do his accent. They speak a different type of English there in Liberia. You know, you'll send me the manual. 
But it's too much to print. It costs $55 to print. Please, can you make it shorter? Let's see, Emmanuel. <laughs> Pastor Andre went there many years ago. I did my first solo mission to Liberia and gave him a computer, which they stole in about two months. You know, it's tough. But they've got a Bible school full of people on Friday afternoons at 5 o'clock. You can tune in. We can maybe do an open class with him one day. And you can see he made his whole church do Bible school. So if you want to be a leader, you need to come to Bible College, to MBTC, on Friday at 5 o'clock. And the, you know what? For African time, they're pretty punctual. This guy's, you know, built, he's built a, an auditorium that looks a bit like ours at the moment, but they have church in it. What's wrong with us? And uh, they've built another thing, classrooms, and, then, and they're also building an orphanage at the same time. And uh, he showed me all these things with his phone while he's walking around. And um, that was, you know, great to hear what people are doing. The guys in Malawi, please send us material. The guy in Kenya, Pastor Pius, not Pope Pius. He's a, he's a pastor there in Kenya. Uh, he's probably. And, uh, you know, they've branched out into several different uh, satellites. So, you know, there's, there's so much beautiful work taking place. There's so much material available. You can all, all of you, can take care of a nation. Da den kele nou ne. Nai so which nation can you adopt? Which city can you adopt? Kampala, Masaka, Mumias, Soul Clinic, huh? Harare. So many, many, many people that are saying, "Please feed me." Huh? So we we international church, huh? We've got all this material got so, so we can pray. Yes, we can pray for, for Harvester Cape Town. Pray for your communities where you can ripple out next. We've got some things which we'll discuss next week with you and tonight with the workers meeting. Our strategies going forward for your communities. And what I've been seeing is that each person has the ability to, to uh, start a house group in their house. And some people have said, yeah, I've been waiting to do this. Why haven't I done it before? It's, it's because there's an anointing to do it now. Amen? Because it's time. Because you've been prepared. So one of the things we share with people is this. Um, this is the, um, we've got a couple of different manuals, you know. For those of you who are new, the foundation course. You see those pillars there? Strong pillars, eh? If you want to build a long-lasting commitment to God, do the foundation course with us. We work you through the foundation stones of your faith. Once you've done that, you should share it with your friends. And really in, impart that into their lives with your children, with your family. So do you have these foundation stones in place? Huh? Huh? Of repentance from dead works, faith towards God, doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, eternal judgment and resurrection of the dead. And then we look at commitment of believers in a church, tithing and offering, vision, witnessing and evangelism, praise and worship and dance, and any other answers to your questions about church. It all, it's all get covered there, huh? got the household leaders training. You see that bread basket there? We've all got bread factories sitting in our homes full of teachings, full of life-giving sermons and messages we can share with people. You're like, I'm all bakeries, but Amen? Amen? One of the things I love the most about France is the bread. When we visit our, our church friends there, they, they call them la maçonneur en action, which means the harvesters of action. Okay? And they do. They do act. They do go out do a lot of things. But every morning we'd go and buy a baguette and have some jambon yeah? et fromage. Jambon is not jam, it's ham. They say, would you like some jam? Yeah, okay. And then he gives me ham. <laughs> and you have it with that beautiful French bread and it's freshly baked every day and puts a bit of butter and jam and cheese on there. Hallelujah. Magnifique. It's a delicieux. And uh, there's so much beautiful bread coming from this ministry that I'd like to share with people. That's why we've made the channel free for everybody. So get your friends on there, subscribe. You know, these meetings are always open for people. We always put all our sermons on there. So this is, we, we're generating food, amen. There's the household leaders training manual. It tells you how we, ha we have house churches. It gives you a mold so that you can go and duplicate and imp implement in your houses. This is a very, very powerful manual called Apostolic Perspective. We did this last term, I think, 
and uh, you can check it out on the channel. This is how we think about church. This is, how, this is where our thinking has changed concerning traditional, ritualistic, religious church. And it's kind of important to get that if you come into this church because the Lord has reformed a lot of things from previous generations. There's a lot of man-made structures that sort of crept into church over the ages that kind of pushed the Holy Spirit out and, and started, you know, counteracting what the Word wants and what Jesus really wanted for His church. And God's given us some, some new insights, you know. And since Martin Luther's Reformation 500 years ago, some things have happened. And some things needed changing. But many churches still follow the same old st structures and it just, you know, you need new wineskins for new wine. That's what you do. So that's one of the ways that you can understand how we think. And I, I say this over and over again, but these are tools for you when people ask you concerning the hope that is in you. Today we're going to look a bit at personal witnessing and evangelism, and I digress a little bit. But these are some of the things available. Amen? Use them. Yeah? There's many tracks as you go out. There's a lot of tracks there on the tables and so on. Ask for a tract or a flyer. Tell people that Jesus loves him, what Jesus says about the church what God says to people in this day and age. Amen. We call it our tract man. Tracts. Handed them out everywhere. And we're going to change, we're going to uh, translate some of them into other languages again. So yeah. Does it know finally there are Petrus? I was just waiting for you to get to that scripture, verse, but it was up there all along, right? So First uh, Peter 5 verse 7. Huh? Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders, verse 5. All of you be submissive one to another. Be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care on Him, for He cares for you. So there's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of understanding that you need before you can cast your care onto Jesus. There's a few things you must understand. Submission. One to another. Submission to God and His ways. You know, if, if you want God to help you, He's got a whole system of help ready for you, but you need to submit to His protocols. Amen? If you want God to help you in your finances, sowing and reaping works. All of us sitting here can testify how God helped us. You know, um, EJ, um, the, the, the birthday boy, he always supports missions. He bids for a painting when we have art auctions and his parents are like, <laughs> one day a bit a bit too high like Eric and Angie <laughs> we're cutting you off at 10, 10 grand okay boyki <laughs> and he, he would you know you'd take some of his pocket money 60, 50 rand sometimes a few hundred rand and he would sow towards missions and you know he, he's, he's a wonderful little drummer he's one of my drum disciples and worships the Lord always wants to do something for God and God helped him with his birthday I was so happy to hear that but you should have invited me to the birthday because I'm very upset about that. I'm going to talk about that. And uh, God, gives, God gives grace to the humble. You know, humility is such a beautiful attribute of Christ. If more people are like Jesus, people will be attracted to church. Thanks for saying Aina or Amen or something like that. Because God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. Amen. And then how do you humble yourself before God that He may exalt you in due time? You take some of your cares that are too much for you and you cast it onto Him. It takes humility to say, okay, I cast my cares onto you, Jesus. I believe you care for me. Because yes, you can do many things. But let's be honest, we've come to a certain point with some things in our lives, like Prophet Nola said, there's some troubles in our life that we haven't been able to fix and I have to cast that on to Jesus now because we've got work to do. We've got a job to do. We've got people to reach and people to love. Hey? Houses to christen, babies to dedicate, couples to marry, families to grow, amen, teachings to share. A lot of things to do. You can't get stuck in those troubles. You have to finally cast it onto the Lord. So let's do that together in prayer. And as we cast our cares onto the Lord, let's give a token of our, of our faith to so say, Lord, as I give today, and whether you're doing it online or physically, whatever the Lord shows you to do, God bless your giving. But let that be an act of your faith. So God, I sow today, but in sowing, I also cast my care onto you for this thing, for that thing, for that project, for this issue, for this trouble, 
for that stress, for this storm in my life, Lord. Use my little substance and multiply it in Jesus' name. Father, we, we humble ourselves before you by casting our cares onto Jesus, for he cares for us. Amen. Just do it right now. You'll feel a burden lift off you. Lord, we cast your, our cares about these things onto you in Jesus' name. Like the prophecy said, Lord, we will be beautiful. You'll give us vineyards. Lord, you will help us to eat the fruit of our land, Lord. And we cast our burdens onto you right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless the giving of your saints. Bless the support of this mission in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I want to thank the, the Durbanville area for doing their thing. And uh, every, every few weeks we have different areas of the, of the church helping and setting up and so on. God bless your faithfulness. Amen. And uh, thank you for, for supporting the church that way. And um, I've seen how the Lord has grown people in serving in simple ways. The anointing actually grows in their lives because they function. So thank you for functioning faithfully each, each area. It's a citywide church. We're in Helderberg. We're in Tigerberg. We're in Durbanville. Amen. We're, in, we're, we're moving into the southern suburbs soon. We're going to have a household there soon. We're setting it up. And uh, then we're also in Milliton area, Tableview Parklands, up into Philadelphia. So it's a citywide church like the prophecy said. And that's why we want to ripple out further into those communities with you. We'll discuss it tonight at workers' meeting at half past six online. Okay, if you want a, a link, just let your household area or area leader know. We'll share the link with you. Today I want to share a message on invitation. And um, uh, Prophet Lynette started the, the sermon very nicely, so thank you, Prophet Lynette. If you go to Jesnia, Prophet for next Nina. Yeah. Check this out. The parable of the wedding feast. <laughs> what a nice confirmation. Did I phone you this week, Lynette? No, I normally phone Lee. I'd Lee, did I, did I tell you about this? No, I didn't tell you about this. It's here on my, it's here on my notes. So, Matthew 22, verse 1 to 14. Let's just read it together very quickly. I watched a nice Jewish story last night on, on a movie about a violinist. And he, at one stage in the movie, he said, uh, I decided to uh, disappear into, a, into a, a community of people where you die to self and you build the local body. Very talented guy, but he sort of disappeared into a community. I said to Chantal, we've done that. We've disappeared into a body of believers and just served the local body and become part of something bigger than ourselves. That's what a church really is. Now, the, the Jews sometimes understand that better than the Christians. Sometimes the Christians live very much for themselves. And it's me, 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 and what I can get from God and what I've done for God. Whereas, you know, together we can accomplish more. If we deny ourselves, take our cross, and follow Jesus, the body can achieve more than one person. Mm. Interesting, eh? So I'm, I'm dressed Jewish today. It's quite funny because if I've got collar issues. Okay, thank you. The theater. Thank you very much. This body, this body, my clip and come. But uh, I've got a lot of respect for them. And the insight that Andy gave us today about Jewish uh, weddings. They, uh, who, oh, you gave it to us. Not, okay, Andy did something else. But the Jewish, the Jewish father says to the son, first get everything ready for your bride, then I'll release you to fetch her. This week we had a wonderful wedding with uh, Prophet Charmaine's son, Wesley and Jamie. And Charmaine prophesied to them in front of the whole family. And it was very, very, very strong. Um, I, I gave a space to do that because we're, we're a team, you know. <laughs> and, and Wesley's open for God and open for things and wants to know more about church. and The family there, they, they've gone through some things over the years. But uh, our sister Valerie was there as well. I don't know, uh, Catherine and Robert were there. So we had a couple of harvesters at the wedding just giving words. 
to people. And I love that because that's the ripple effect. Just showing the love of God for a couple when they need it. I mean, he came to me, please, will you do the wedding? You know, I said, of course. Your family is important to me, you know. And we had a wonderful, there's a wonderful anointing there. Huh? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful moment. So let's look at uh, Matthew 22, verse 1. Jesus answered and spoke to them and said, uh, by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And he sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fatted cattle are killed, and all the things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, and one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized the servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed the murderers, and burnt up their city. He said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they had found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment, and he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. The king said to his servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Interesting parable. And you know, it's often like that. You do your best for people sometimes. You prepare a feast for them. They decide not to come. You phone other people and say, I've made all this food. Will you just pitch, please? You end up having a good time with the people who are actually thankful that you did invite them. And the ones that you wanted there, they didn't want to come. It's okay. Have your party. Have your wedding. Amen. I keep telling you, church is all about a wedding. We turn our weddings into reformational ceremonies by letting the, the bride come first, prepare herself with her bridesmaid. We should have, give them lamps too. <laughs> and then we say, behold, the bridegroom comes. And then the, the, the groom walks in and everybody cheers. Sometimes we even have a trumpet. And then we explain to the family, Jesus and the church, and his final return to fetch his a pure and spotless bride and we preach the gospel through our weddings it's very beautiful it's very very anointed and the, the wife is never late she's on time man. <laughs> our weddings we meet our time requirements no problem because it takes a guy like two minutes to get dressed it takes a woman like much longer but yeah <laughs> So that one of the most wonderful things in life is to receive an invitation. I remember when we did mission work in Australia, my parents would give people tickets to come to our concert campaigns because the Australians like concerts. They like music. It's a key for the nation. Music has been a key to lead that nation out of the pagan background with Darwinism and things like that. And into a, actually they've become a, a church movement from Australia, you know. And they worship God. They love music, you see. So in the early 80s, we were there and um, did these concert campaigns. And I remember the tickets. You hand them out. Would you like to come to a concert, mate? You want an invitation? You want a ticket? Yeah, it's free. You can come, mate. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, okay, good. Fair dinkum. Yeah, fair dinkum. Fair dinkum means really? <laughs> and um, then they came. Yeah. Some people love invitations. Do you? How nice it is, you know, when you get a wedding invitation for somebody, you go, oh, I, I, I'm looking forward to that. And then all of a sudden you get all your best clothes and now you feel like dressing up again. Life's all right. You even renew your vows with your wife on the way there, whatever. It reminds you of your first love. Good food, good company, opportunity to celebrate life again. You know, when we didn't have weddings during COVID, it was the saddest thing for me. I did a wedding with four people in a block of flats, just out of COVID, and it was like, something's wrong, something's missing. But you know, the people outside from the balcony started clapping, and it releases joy, you know, a wedding. Beautiful thing. But not for yellow, for yellow young mans and young friends, or for echte partners. Amen. It's going to be great. So yeah, I love an invitation as well. And um, 
first you get invitations as a, as a kid, it's birthday parties. How many of you have young children? Birthday parties every weekend. My buddy's having a birthday party, and I'm at your present to cry. And, your, and it's kind of your life is birthday parties when you have toddlers. That's kind of it. From one to the next, and you don't miss it, and they're excited about it. It's all life is about, are you invited to that one's party? And they normally invite the whole class, and no one feels out, so it's great. As you get a bit older, people get a bit nastier, and they leave you out, and they don't invite you to certain things. It's still nice when they do invite you, you know. Uh, it takes on different forms, invitations, as you get older. But it reminds you of the important things in your life, and you sometimes have those gatherings. I know in the African culture, they like funerals a lot because they get to see everybody for five days and eat. That's changed a little bit too with the, with the COVID situation. <laughs> okay, Mindiwe is laughing, okay. <laughs> hey, it's true. <laughs> oh, but you know, um, to get together with people, I miss the summit. I, it was terrible having a summit in my house. Because normally we're seeing people from around the world. They, ca- they fly in South Africa and we get together and we spend a couple of days and time flies because you're having fun. At least uh, one of our apostles from up north came and said to me, hey man, I'll be there for you. And my parents were there and my dogs were there and the team was there. So thanks, Arthur. You know, Marika was there. She came in and out. She, she airlifted in food for the crew. Thank you very much. And catering teams. Ned, we, we ate like kings. I don't know we, what we were supposed to do with all that food. It was multiplied before it got to us. <laughs> but it was fantastic. We shared it with people. It's like, please take us to your families. And we had a wonderful, you know, summit in the house. But uh, I, I desire for us to get together again. And the Lord will allow us to do it in the right time. We'll be patient. And uh, any other opportunity to gather, I'm going to take. But invitations, you know. And then, you know, someone invites you to come to church. And then invites you to come to a house group. Or someone invites you to ask Jesus into your life. You go, but this is a different type of invitation. What's the type of party is that? Just wait. <laughs> I'm going to give you a few, <laughs> few invitations to consider. When you're speaking to people about Jesus, there's a few invitations for you to consider. We looked at the first one now. An invitation to transfer your cares onto him for he cares for you. We've looked at that. You can ask someone, do you know that Jesus invites you to transfer all the cares of your life onto him on a daily basis? Isn't it great that somebody wants you to do that? Most people, when they dump things on you like that, you go, you know what? I'll see you again in three months. Because I get dumped on every time I talk to you. But Jesus is actually willing to take that burden for you. He carried his cross for you. Amen. And that's a different level of of relationship and care. There's some people that you can say anything to and they handle it. And those are the type of people you call for in your chaotic times, your troubled times. And you know, Jesus can handle it. Whatever you got to give him, good and bad, he can carry it on his broad shoulders. He'll do it again and again and again. He's a good friend. Good friends are people that love you anyway. They know your faults. They know your hang-ups. They know the things you dump on them. Do you know what? I still love you. Got a few people like that in the world that I can speak to like that. The rest of them will all run away. It's true, right? Other ones will go, you know what, I'm there for you, it's fine. Because they know that you'll open up for them when they need it. And that's the relationship Jesus wants with people. Not just to come to church, be part of this, be part of that, be part of a Christian club thing. He actually wants you to really transfer your cares onto Him, for He cares for you. And you know what, I've seen in the body of Christ how we can take tremendous knocks as a church. We can absorb any situation as a church when we stand together and pray with one another he the church then cares for you because you invested and you're faithful in the church when things happen in your life the church comes around you like a like a cell and like an amoeba and that sort of absorbs that thing 
and it eats it up and it turns it into energy. It's quite strange. It's, it's a phenomenon. But you take all your problems and your issues and things like that, the church comes and it eats it up and turns it into joy. It's, we need to study this more. How many of us have come into church with all sorts of things and hang-ups and sicknesses and things of the past and hurts and abuses and that and that? And, and, you know, and you come in and the church absorbs it and it doesn't damage the church. The church turns it into a testimony. Amen. Isn't that a miracle? Yes. I've seen people come in here that have been dedicated to Satan as children and God sets them free. They've been through all sorts of rituals that I can't tell you. And then they come and they get prayed for and the church absorbs it and goes, zoop. And he, turn, he takes your ashes and he turns it into beauty. Amen. He takes your mourning and he turns it into oil of joy. Hey? It's incredible. I mean, there's a lot of you that are, I know your stories. The devil tried to destroy everything about you. And he, he did a good job. And he thought, now I've got them. They're never going to recover from this. And you step into a church where God starts working on you and you cast all your burdens onto Him for He cares for you. And then you start saying, oh, He's made that whole. He's healed my broken heart. He's taken me out of prison. I no longer have to behave like that old person or the way the devil reminds me I was. I can be a new creation. And you're like, I'm tapped into a different life source. I've cast everything onto you. He actually does care for me. And then you start telling other people, and the devil goes, how did this one recover? He speaks to his demons. He said, didn't you destroy their relationship? Didn't you break up that marriage? Didn't you like take all their resources away? Didn't you break their relationship with their boss? Didn't you do this and this and that? Didn't you slander them everywhere you went? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did, I did. Because the demons, you know, lie to each other. A house divided against itself shall not stand. They report to the devil like we report to God. They get assignments against you, and they come back and report to their boss and then say, yeah, 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 we did it. No, they didn't. <laughs> the church covered them because the gates of hell will not prevail, you see. So when you say him, Jesus, the chief cornerstone we sang about, amen. The second invitation is to really trust God. Can I invite you to transfer the trust of your life to the Lord Jesus? It also said in one place that the government of your life will be on His shoulders. We speak about good governance. Man, Jesus is a great governor. You will keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because He trusts in you. Isaiah 26 verse 3. Peace is, a, is one of the main parts of God's kingdom. Because it's a peace that surpasses your understanding. Isaiah 26 verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace. Huh? Have you got that there yet on the, on the screen please? Isaiah 26 verse 3. If I can read it. It's a battle to keep your mind stayed on God. There's things wrestling your attention away from God and away from the solution all the time. There's, there's things second-guessing you all the time. God gives you something to do, and then it gets second-guessed. No, but what about this, and what about that, and what about this? Do you know what? The Word of God is true. Keep your mind stayed on Him. Eh? Trust in Him, and He'll keep you in perfect peace. You have to fight those thoughts. You can't help the thoughts come, but you've got to take them captive and bring them to the obedience of Christ. Like one, you know, like taking a mouse and clicking and dragging and throwing it in the trash. Yes. You, the trash is there. The option of trashing all the rubbish on your screen is there. But you've got to click and drag it and put it in there and then say, empty basket. Yes. This one guy put a flushing toilet on his trash can. If, you know, like, you remember Flippy? We had a very clever guy who was clever with gadgets and music and stuff. So he, he had a clock on his computer that went, yeah, 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 you know, like from Roxette. Every, every hour it'd go, yeah, yeah, do, 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 do. that's one o'clock. 
Yeah. Now imagine when you get to like 10 o'clock at night. The flip, he put off your clock, man. And then when he did his trash can, I believe, the one, the one time they, they turned it into a bomb. It actually explodes. So he goes, he puts everything in the trash can, empty trash can, he goes, <laughs> Remember him? He's doing a good work with camps for the youth. He might take our youth to his camps. So I want my trash can to sound like that, or a flush toilet would be even better, because that's exactly what those things are in your life. Flush it away. You know, and if you don't do that, it bogs up. And this is called prayer, downloading onto the Lord. You know, it's one thing to pray for groceries, and that's important, but you also have to unburden yourself in prayer to the Lord on a daily basis. Trash those things. Call it trash. Those words that sort of hang around you, that people say about you. Those sort of expectations that people also put on you. Those sort of wrong judgments that people throw at you. Ye is suer. Ye is the Do you know what? I'm a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Do you know what it means to pass away? It's a nice way of saying Dead. Or like our Indian friends say, late. Do you know brother so-and-so? He's late. He's coming. What time is he coming? No, no, no. He's passed away. Old things are late. Amen. All things are new. Early. <laughs> Love it. Trash it. I, you know, my parents taught me to take thoughts captive. Because a thought conceived can bear sin. Huh? And sin conceived can bear death. But by the same token, God's word seed conceived can, do, yes, can bring life. It can germinate and bring life and multiply. So it's the same process, but you, you determine what you allow to be sown in your soul, in your thinking, in your emotions. Sometimes the deliverance you need it's not just a spiritual demon cast out of you. It's something lodged in your emotions that prevents you from receiving the truth. Does that make sense? It's like stuck in your feelings. I know the truth, Lord. I accept the truth, Lord, but I can't get over this feeling. Now, feelings can be deceiving. And the devil could have uh, lodged something there that's preventing your mind from working with your spirit. And that little offense you have with someone there that you haven't forgiven, you know, communion is wonderful. Use communion to dislodge all those offenses from your soul and your spirit and your mind and your heart. Just say, God, I forgive them. God, I forgive them. God, I forgive them. The biggest job you have to do is to forgive people. Keep your heart clean. Keep your heart above all things. For out of it spring the issues of life. If your heart is clean, you can work. You can carry on. You can bear fruit. Your emotions are clean. God can even start leading and guiding you through your, your, your renewed emotions and your renewed mind. You can start feeling like Jesus feels for people and feel compassion for someone. And you'll know, you know what? I'm filled with compassion for that person. I should do something. And God starts leading you through your emotions for somebody even because it's been regenerated. But if your emotions are stuck in the past and you're still fighting a battle with someone that's 20 years old, uh, 20 years older and they've forgotten about you, what's the point? Every time you see them, you still have that argument when you were teenagers. It's a waste of energy. The devil knows how to sap your energy, to take your, your attention off what's important and keep you busy with things. Now trash those things. One by one. And you know what? It's good, Prophet Nola. We, we, call, we call the bit of fasting and praying this time in church. It's a great thing to do. You'll all flatten the curve. You'll all feel better. And, but the most important thing is, God's going to sort out your heart. Fasting and prayer changes things, but the thing it changes most is you. The fasting doesn't change God. He never changes. We think that we're going to turn, you know, I'm going to twist God's arm to quickly act 
in this area and sort that one out. And this Fasting changes you. Yes. How you respond to the way He's doing things. Thank you. The biggest thing that I need to check for and what, and what Jesus needed to check for in His life was not operating by His own will, but by His Father's will. Whose will are you operating by? And you cleanse that. Checking your heart. Checking the spring where, where all the issues of life spring out from. The living water that's supposed to come from your life to others can be tainted, you know. Sort it out. Get that bitter spring sweet again. Then people will drink from you. Why don't people want to drink from me? Maybe you need to sort out the acid levels. The pH, pH levels be a bit of you know. Sit a pair electrolyte dripples down, you know. Put a bit of nutrients of the word in there, and sort out your spring, you know, and you'll be become well prepared for people. What's that Italian in? Pellegrino. Huh? Pellegrino. My friend river rafts in that river. He says you can drink it while you while you're paddling through there. He goes to Italy on all that. Yeah, I'm, I'm in this wonderful water. <laughs> oh my gosh. Pure water for you. Amen. Amen. Top level. Perfect pH. So there's an invitation for you. Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life. You believe in me, though he may die, he shall live. John 11, 25. He was praying for Lazarus at this point. Lazarus was in the tomb for four days. Hey, reik al, jere. The Afrikaans. He already smells, Lord. If you had come earlier, my brother would not be rotting in the grave. And Jesus, then Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And to prove it, Lazarus, come forth. And he came out with his... Because he says untie him, which means he was tied up. <laughs> and if he fell, he had to worm his way out. I mean, how the heck? You're supposed to come out if you're tied up. We did this once. We tied people up in, in, in what was it, toilet paper. At that one conference, he preached this one. <sighs> untie him. So yes, the invitation is to rediscover life or resurrect something that's dead in your life. When you're witnessing to people about Jesus and you see what the devil's tried to kill in their lives, you can see it, man. Sometimes it's a really good idea that they just gave up on. You say, man, do you know what? God can speak life into that idea. Why don't we pray about it? Can I invite you? Huh? Can I invite you to let Jesus into that thing to give it life again? And, and this is different from, hey, do you want to come to church? You must come to church, hey? You must. But South Africans do that. They say must, you know. Du muss is the German. But the German thing. Um, and they mean well, but you're not showing them why they must. Give people a reason to understand the invitation Jesus is giving them. Yeah. And show them how it's going to benefit them. Because it's benefiting you. And you can tell them about your life. But you've got to also pick up what invitation they need. So I'm giving you a few examples here just to trigger your thinking. And then the Holy Spirit will, will turn this into something special, a special invitation for your friends, for your family, and people that really are in need of God. Amen. They don't always see it. They don't understand it. They need an invitation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So rediscover life. Trust the Lord. Cast your cares on Him. Let him rescue your true self. Um, Luke 4, 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel or good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to, com to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. To, to preach the gospel to the poor, it's peop you must understand where someone has poverty of spirit in an area of their life. Everybody's poor in an area of their life. And you preach to that poverty. You give them hope. You give them good news. Yeah, you know, we've tried this and tried that. I know, 
I know rich people that are poor in spirit that receive the gospel very well because they know where they need Jesus. They've tried to do things for people and it's not worked. It's blown up in their face. They've been abused. I know a rich family in this city that have done a lot for Cape Town and, and then the party that they were in politically kicked them out. You might think you've been hurt, you know, and you might think you've got problems and there's areas of your life that is poor. Everybody faces that in different levels. It's not just the guy on the street. Find that area of poverty and preach to that and give, proclaim the good news to them and heal their broken hearts with the anointing of Jesus in you. Amen. Big thing for a lot of men, legacy. How am I going to provide a legacy for my family and this and that? The best legacy you can leave is a spiritual legacy. The Bible says in Proverbs, a rich man, when he passes away, so does all his ventures with him. Because all his money gets split into a million different directions, and nobody has the drive he has for those little visions of his. But if his visions align with God, he leaves behind a spiritual legacy. Nobody cares. Yeah? But all those things that you thought were so important, the longest lasting things are spiritual. Look at the, the, the disciples who left all to follow Jesus. It's still the most popular names for babies in the world. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In different languages. <laughs> Legacy, man. They don't even want it. God gave it to them, honored them. Invitation of love. If someone loves you so much that they'd give their life for you, how would you rate that person's love for you? If someone was willing to die for you, how would you rate that love? And you start a conversation. Yeah, but I don't believe in church. And why must I believe in Jesus? And this and that. And I didn't ask Jesus to die for me. Have you heard conversations like that? Okay, but have you got a friend that will give up something for you? Yeah, I've got a few friends. Okay, well, Jesus is willing to do that for you. Greater love is no one than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. And Romans 5, 8 takes it further. That was John 15, 13, greater love. Romans 5, 8 said, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus didn't wait for us to get it right before he sacrificed for us. He did it anyway. And we have the option to reject it. If you've tried everything you can to bring a friend to Jesus, and they still reject you, still love them. Because while you were still a sinner, Christ died for you. So, It's an invitation of love. God is inviting you to love some people through everything they're going to put you through until they're saved. But it's also an invitation of them to them to receive love they didn't deserve. And lastly, an invitation to change your direction. Did you receive an invitation to change your direction in life and follow Jesus' principles? Jesus, who was compassionate, flexible, non-judgmental, but forgiving towards sinners. Would you like to follow someone like that? Would you like to change your direction in your life to become more compassionate towards others? To be more flexible, to be less judgmental, to be more forgiving. Would you like to be more forgiving? Well, Jesus can help you do that. Luke 5, 23 says, What's easier to say your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? That you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately, immediately he rose up, took what he'd been lying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. He changed his direction and he went to his home on his own feet. They were amazed glorified God, were filled with fear, saying, we've seen strange things today. And, you know, if you speak to people and say, if the answers of any of these questions is yes, 
then would you consider inviting Jesus into your life by saying a simple prayer? You've got an invitation to cast your cares on Him, to trust Him, to understand what His love is for you, huh? to change direction, to rescue a part of your life that's, that's maybe died. But you can invite Jesus into your life. Amen? Why don't we pray a prayer together, everybody? If you want to, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I accept all the invitations you've made for me to love and trust you with my life. Please accept me as I am. And forgive all that I've done wrong towards others and towards God. I invite you to be Lord of my life. I confess that you are my Lord and Savior in all categories of life. I believe that you died and rose for my sins. Now fill me with your Spirit and let me be born again into a new life. Breathe life into every part of my spirit, soul, and body. And give me the peace I desire the joy of living and the ability to live right before you. In Jesus' name I pray. Okay. There as you were praying, a lot of you transferred some heavy loads onto the Lord. We've done that today. But I felt some of you do that now. Some of you have been forgiven from past things and sins. The Lord says, don't mention it again. When the devil comes to remind you of your old sins, you've now prayed a prayer. Now leave that with the Lord in Jesus' name. He's cleansed you today. It's finished, man. Amen. God is giving you a new plan for your life, a change of direction. Follow the leading of His Spirit. Amen. Today, some of you prayed, the Lord's busy healing your body. I'm aware of someone suffering of sinus problems. Yeah. Okay. Lord, heals you, my sister. Receive his breath into you right now in Jesus' name. Jack, just put your hand on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You just pray, Lord, that you give it relief from her sinus problems and any headaches and Migraines that that can cause. Lord, put the care of that on you. And by his stripes, you are healed. Just pray for it, Pastor Jack. Go for it. In Jesus' name. At the back too. Say at the back too. Someone with sinus issues. In Jesus' name there. Okay. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Believers, will you just pray for them there? Neil, you pray. Just pray there, please, Janine. Um, Clint, uh, uh, Colin and Kim. Just pray for the sister behind you, please. If you have faith, just pray for her. Let the Lord use you in Jesus' name. I'm aware of some ankle problems on this side. There's some, it's, it's almost like there's a, something, a splint wrong or something causing pain in your ankle area. Who's that here? Ankle area problems. When you put your weight on it, it's, it's painful. Who's experiencing pain in their ankles? Anybody experiencing pain in their ankles, especially the ankle bone area there? Mm. It's almost like when you put pressure on it, it doesn't want to take the pressure. Anybody like that? Okay. Let's talk about the knees. Let's pray for knees. God will strengthen the feeble knees. The cartilages of the knees and the areas there. God wants to strengthen that. Yes? Okay. Just lay your hands there. Just come lay your hands here. Get some believers. Come. In Jesus' name. Just, just agree with me there, Shalene, everybody. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father, for a man that's worked hard for his family. Thank you, Lord, that he's been faithful to provide. Now provide for him in Jesus' name. 
I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you cast this care onto you. Renew, regenerate. Jesus, <laughs> we speak life into that area in Jesus' name. He will strengthen those knees. Amen. And the, the hands as well that, that, that hang down from a lot of work and a lot of toil. The Lord says he will lift up your arms and you will see a glorious, glorious provision in your life and in your family. As you serve the Lord faithfully, the Lord will even open up your house for many people to come and drink from living waters in Jesus' name. And God will make your feet beautiful because you proclaim the good news and the gospel of peace in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Maybe someone with their ankles is watching, but I, I really see a, a little splint coming out of the ankle bone, and it's causing you pain. If that's you, just WhatsApp me. We're going to pray for you anyway, Lord. We pray for that ankle that we're seeing now. We thank you, Lord, that you heal it. Father, in the name of Jesus, let those feet be beautiful. Let them be able to carry weight in Jesus' name and stand firm. And Lord, also prepare them with the gospel of peace in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Yaku, the Lord shows me he's going to give you a strategy. And you're going to ripple out into different fields. God says there's going to be multiple fields that you're going to be rippling out, multiple pools where your ideas are going to ripple out and they're going to rebound, but you might not recognize what they looked at because they went out one way and they'll come back another way. So God says it's like you, you're going to lift the limitations off your thinking and think only this. God says no. This, I see multiplication of by five different types of rippling back because you were willing to do some things for God. You were willing to look after families and reach families. The Lord says He's going to open up different pools for you. Some of those pools you're going to, lay, you're going to raise up people to look after so that you will free up to do what's in your heart and is as a family. Amen. Being faithful, God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. For Ivan and your family, and the Lord shows me that you must keep making your voice heard, keep teaching the word. In Afrikaans, there's, there's, a, there's something that you need to do for your nation and for your people. And uh, the Lord says, if you faithfully just make your sound, those who hear it, you'll see. God will give you circuits of ministry. As a couple, and later as a family, amen. You're a blessing to us as a family. You're a light in your community, amen. And God says he's, he's put an angel there at your house. You don't have to worry, he's got you covered, amen. Covered from COVID, amen. And, he's, and you'll see, the Lord will give you more influence in that community than ever before. And part of it's got to do with you speaking in the language that you were born in. So prepare, get the materials ready. Go and do some things for the Lord in, your, in the Makwaland. And follow up those contacts. Because churches and Bible centers will come from it. But God wants to use you. And don't be a Gideon and say, Ach, Jere, wees na maar teken en nog a teken en nog a teken. It's time, it's time to stop threshing in secret. It's time to speak out in Jesus' name. And God will use your children. Their children will be signs to you how God will use them. Even Natasha and the a fiance, there's something there that God wants to do in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God's doing beautiful things. He's giving you invitations. As, as I'm ministering to people, some of you saw things. And if you write that down, it's your invitation to go and do what God showed you. And if you need help with it, you can talk to us. If you want prayer further, we'll be available to you. We're going to dismiss the meeting now. Um, but uh, we, we're going to have a workers meeting tonight, but you can contact us and you can contact your, uh, your household leaders about these ideas God's giving you. I believe God's giving us invitations to do great and mighty exploits for Him in the earth. I'm very excited about what the Lord wants us to do. There's a good foundation here. So enjoy your invitations. Please respond to your invitations. RSVP. <laughs> Resurrect, serve, Hey? <laughs> Verify the truth hey? and prosper. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>